Today I want to talk about how to introduce the Day of the Dead to your students so that they don't freak out. Now, back when I started teaching, when I was a high school teacher, I used to do this completely wrong. And what happened was that my students would actually get freaked out and they would walk out of my classroom, get all upset. Um, and sometimes they would be like, oh my God, this is against my religion or whatever, or they would be freaked out because we were gonna be talking about a taboo topic, which is death. So I'm gonna let you know what I used to do completely wrong, what I have learned since then, so that you, if you're a new Spanish teacher, or maybe it's the first time that you are now introducing El Dia de los Muertos to your students so that you won't make the same mistakes that I used to make and you can ease your students um, into this wonderful cultural lesson. By the way, if you're new to me, I'm Rachel Lucas. I'm the founder of Tech for World Language Teachers. I run the community, the blog, the Facebook group, and the World Language Teacher Tech Academy. And I help busy language teachers save time and engage their students with the use of technology. So, by the way, I have a free classroom management workshop. You can go to the Tech for World Language Teachers blog and get that. Um, it's totally free and you'll get added to our email community. I share my personal classroom management horror stories there and how I was able to overcome it within two days. Um, I share my story, go check it out. It's free and you'll get added to our email community where I send lots of free resources. Okay, so let's start talking about how to introduce the Day of the Dead to your students so that you don't have the situation I used to have where they would freak out, walk out of class. Or you may have a lot of parents calling you, being upset. Um, so yes, let's talk about how to do that. So the first thing I do, starting on day one, on the first day of school, I start preparing my students. Now I, um, live in Florida so for us the first day of school is in August so what I do is I start preparing them on the first day of school I start telling them about some I start preparing them saying hey we're gonna be talking about this we're gonna be having this kind of lesson and they're like oh what is that and what is it and I start letting them know I also have things up around the classroom, little decorations. And when they ask, I'm like, oh, this is what this is. So I'm constantly preparing them to, um, you know, for that when it is, I'm not just dumping it on them. Oh, by the way, we're learning about the Day of the Dead. You know, I have already been preparing them mentally for months for this. Now, when I first started teaching about El Dia de los Muertos, it was very different. Now it's very, it's kind of like fun and it's upset that we have several movies that have kind of helped to ease um, and educate people about it. Um, you know, first the Book of Life came out and students were like, hey, can we watch the Book of Life and things like that. Um, and then of course the movie Coco came out and these two things, along with a lot of, um, you know, here in the United States, it's been more culturally available when you go to Michael's or Target, you see things. Um, even at Ross, you will see now decorations for El Dia de los Muertos, where, you know, 18 years ago, that was not the case. Nobody really knew what it was back then. And so as a Spanish teacher, the challenge was, how do I introduce this, which is part of our curriculum and its culture, um, how do I explain that to the students and their parents that this is just, I'm not trying to impose my beliefs on anyone. You know, it's not even something I celebrate. Um, I'm Puerto Rican and Dominican, but it's part of the curriculum and we're going to learn about it because it's part of the culture and part of the curriculum. And that's it. It's not, your beliefs are not being imposed upon. So you really want to make sure that you're um, being safe about it. Um, also, you want to try to make it as fun and light as possible because this is a very um, taboo topic and you really want to try to let the students know um, when we're comparing and contrasting um, how we view death here in the United States versus um, in Mexico or in, in a few places in Latin America that celebrate the Day of the Dead. You want to make, uh, make it clear that it's not about, um, you know, 
it being creepy and scary and you know a sad thing but it's really more of a celebration of life and honoring and remember the people that have lived and when you put it that way that really makes a difference um, and so making it a safe space and something that's exciting having um, projects um, and ideas to do to make it fun and interactive for the students um, you know making asking them if, do they have a loved one it could be a pet um, I make it as safe as possible um, if they want to share and build an altar now there are several digital altars that you can um, go check out now I have a blog post on the Tech for World Language Teachers blog that has lots of resources about El Dia de los Muertos and things that you can go look, including ofrendas, craft activities. We do craft activities. Um, they're super fun. We make calavera masks, and those are super fun. There's a uh, there's also videos um, that can help explain what the Dia de los Muertos is. And I would definitely make it a fun interactive thing, like ask them, like my friend Allison Perryman from the Cultural Classroom, she has this really cool presentation that is part of the um, uh, Cultural Web Quest Bundle that I made a video about. And she has it where they ask, she asks about them and it's interactive and, they're, and it's a great way to kind of introduce the topic to them, we're non-threatening, um, I highly recommend that you check out the presentation. It is part of, um, it's currently not available, um, you know, separately um, through my community. It's available as part of the bundle. So go check that out. I'll, I'll attach the link to the WebQuest Culture Bundle um, for that. But yes, that's what you want to try to do. Make it as fun and interactive and make it, make it something that they're looking forward. And so I would do... I would start out by again preparing them and then I would start I, I would take about five days to do um, so we would take like an entire week uh, I taught 48 minute the last few years 48 minute um, parent, uh, periods it used to be 90 per minute periods but towards the last four or five years it was um, 48 minutes so I would take an entire uh, five day week and I would you know day one we're learning about it we're officially and I, again I was constantly preparing them and getting them excited about oh we're going we're going to the day of the dead we're going to be talking about the day of the dead and we're going to make crafts and we're going to do this and we're going to do that and so by the time they came to it it was not a scary thing at all it was a fun thing that they were looking forward to um, also I incorporate projects um, you know and activities so we would start day one and we would like learn about it and do like a presentation like the one that Allison has um, so we would do something like that where they're talking about it and they're sharing and then we're comparing and contrasting and then um, I'm showing them images and then I'm letting them know hey we're gonna wrap up with um, uh, it used to be I used to do the book of life but then we wrap up the the week by watching Coco the movie and as we're watching Coco I'm asking for them to identify some of the things and some of the examples that we have talked about the day of the dead and okay what is that called what are they doing uh, what is in a friend why is there you know and you recognize that as we're moving and I have questions for them to answer whilst they're watching the movie so we wrap up with that but in between that again we start with introduction then we do um, you know an interactive activity um, you can have them build their own digital altar I have um, all those resources on my blog the tech for world English teachers um, go check that out you can have them do a digital altar you can have them do a altar in the classroom you can maybe create an altar and space in your classroom and everybody kind of brings a picture and something that um, you know their loved one we've done that um, I have a loved one that passed away and he liked Twizzlers so I would bring in Twizzlers uh, on that day and they would bring in something else that their loved one liked and so we share we told stories about our loved ones that passed away and we share pictures and things like that so we've done that and that was super fun 
as well. Then we have a craft day project, um, a, a project, a craft day. So either we're building a digital altar um, and you can have stations. Um, a lot of times that's what I did. I had stations and okay, these people in this corner, they're um, doing, um, you know, the crafts, whether they're making the Calavera mask or they're doing something else. This um, section over here is doing, maybe they're doing the, um, they could paint half of their face, um, you know, because we couldn't do the entire face because we couldn't cover our entire face. But my principal let me do half of our, our faces. So you could have that. Um, you can have a section that's building the digital altar. You can have a section that's doing papel picado and you let them choose where they wanna be. It may be that they're gonna they're gonna pick two stations. You know, first they do this and then they do that. But you let the students have a voice on how they want to um, how they want to interact with the material and how they want to apply it. So that worked really well to get a lot of engagement. Um, we done fun. We do fun games like cahoots after we've kind of done everything, and then we wrap up with um, watching the movie Coco, which they look forward to. And on that day, again, they get to bring, you know, if their loved one liked, um, you know, Twizzlers, we bring in Twizzlers that day. Uh, if their loved one liked pizza, whatever it was, we bring, that, we, bring, we bring that in. So anyway, that is a really fun way to introduce the Day of the Dead to your students without it being like a very traumatic, scary thing. Um, it becomes, it goes from being a taboo topic that students are, you know, hesitant to talk about to being something fun and engaging and interactive and they go and they tell their families about it and their friends. And I can't tell you how many other students would come and in, in my school and tell me, I hear your class is so much fun. How do I get into your class? So imagine, you know, I went from learning from my mistakes. I went from going where students were running out of my class, you know, like, oh my God, this is like, I'm scared to death and like oh, this horrible teacher to like, they love me and students are coming up to me and going, how do I get into your class? Because I've heard your class is so much fun. My friends are always talking about your class. How do I get into your class? So it is possible to go from that to that. So anyway, um, next video, I'm gonna talk about alternative assignments for the Dia de los Muertos or the Day of the Dead. Because you may ha still have students that are not going to want to partake for religious reasons or whatever. So how do you handle that? We're gonna talk about that in the next video. Again, I'm gonna send this out. If you're in, in my email community, make sure that, um, you know, you are, if you're not, make sure you get on the email community by going to the Tech for World Language Teachers blog and getting the free workshop, the free classroom management workshop. You'll get that and you'll get added to the community. And don't forget to go there also to check out all of the awesome resources for El Dia de los Muertos. All right, and if you want more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow so you can get notified of when I release more videos like this. Thanks so much, bye.